How do I be inspirational? Stop what you're doing right now. Are you in love with your life? <laughs> if you're not in love with your life, something needs to change. Listen to this beautiful bit of insight by writer Tim Urban. The last stars will die out 100 trillion years from now, followed by 10 to the power of 106 years of just black holes. Condense, that's like the universe starting with one second of stars and then a billion times seven years of just black holes. Stars are basically the immediate after effects of the Big Bang. A one second sizzle of brightness before settling into eternal darkness. We live in that one bright second. So this video is for anyone who might want to convince their partner or their friend to take the leap with them. There's a reason so many of us are out here doing it. And today we're going to tell you all those reasons why you should sell your house or not buy one in the first place and buy a sailboat. So I don't know if anyone else out there has been hearing these similar things that I have been. I've been hearing from people that are paying a lot more attention to the economy basically, you know, it's much smarter than I am in that department and people whose advice that I try. Anyway, I've heard that there's going to be a recession, like a maybe not a global financial crisis, but some financial global difficulties. We're having conversations about a recession. 2022 has not been Stock great for the stock market. The, the rest of the economy is about to fall. The Federal Reserve raised interest Impacting rates again the today. Supply chain. That's a good reason to not buy a house and to buy a boat, I would have thought. To cash it all in, because your boat, boats um, have actually been going up in value recently. Sailing upwind at the moment at seven knots. Got little Lenny boy down here. Do you want to tell everyone we're going? <coughs> we're going to my mama, please, mama. How are you this morning, David? Hi, I'm good. What's new? We are sailing and looking forward to uh, to go spearfishing on Wednesday. We get oh. some tuna. Okay, tuna and uh, right. yeah. How are you, Captain? How am I? Yeah. Good. This is beautiful. Woke up a little hungover today and uh, started blowing 18 knots, so I thought the best thing to do would be to go for a sail. Number two. It's sad, but it's true. You are going to die. Someday, Lord, we're all gonna die someday. Mama's on pills, that is over the hills, and we're all gonna die. What is that from? It's an Australian artist. Oh my gosh, my parents used to listen to her. What's her name? Has anyone read The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker? Him and someone before him, maybe Descartes, talk about that ultimately the demise of, or the fact that we're going to die is the motivation behind everything that we do. Anything to add to that? Well, like, uh, we could elaborate, but I think it's pretty obvious. You, you're gonna die, so you might as well buy a boat before that happens. If that's what you wanna do. If you come this far, you, you probably do no, kinda wanna buy a boat. You, you haven't really lived unless you've thrown it all away and you bought yourself a sailboat. You absolutely have to do that. Yeah. Job offshore. After COVID, the New York Times actually revealed that 60% of people are back in their offices because their jobs couldn't be done remotely. But the other 40% are either entirely working from home or just going into the office part-time. We're rarely without internet these days. Every new country we go to, we buy a SIM card, we pop it into the Wi-Fi booster, and we have pretty fast internet. I'm constantly uploading 40 gigabyte of video footage without any dramas. And a patient of ours actually works with 
Starlink, which is super exciting, and Riley's gotten the inside scoop of what we can expect in the future, so we're so excited about that. So by selling your house, or just not having to pay the crazy inflated rental fees per month, that's a really nice start and can get you a long way on a sailboat. So once you buy the sailboat, that's the expensive part, you gotta buy the sailboat. And a rule of thumb is each year you'll have to pay 10% of what the boat is worth in maintenance fees. And of course you gotta buy fuel and food and all that. But anchoring is free and you can definitely do boat life cheaply. We think you'll get many more incredible experiences and much more out of life having made the switch. <laughs> Are you okay? Did you put mustard in your burger? For me? Yeah. No. It's the best part. Did you guys make the burger? Well then the burger's gonna be the best part. It's gonna be better than the mustard. Don't throw the potatoes in the ocean. Do you know how long it took us to make these, darling? <gasps> Reason number four, the slowing of time. But really, it feels like since we started sailing, time has slowed down. I think that might help you to understand yourself or help you find yourself if you're lost. Some sailors gain a profound sense of oneness with their boat, the sea, the sound of the wind. Would you say that they transcend alone? They reach a state of nirvana. Some can reach the state of nirvana. Mm -hmm. Have you reached the state of nirvana? A couple of times, yeah. <laughs> The boat becomes a self-contained universe and the process of sailing becomes all-consuming. Any sense of time changes and expands. Small moments becoming more important. He, do, he needs to learn. Yeah, I'm not going to burn him, I'm just going to get him close. Hot, hot. Oh, that's, that's hot. Mm. Ouch, Fire. Ouch, ouch. Sailing can be a meditative, reflective, meditative. and engrossing experience. Riley's done a workout this morning and he's teasing us, so we're gonna do workouts as well, but there's a big wall of water coming. We don't exactly have room to work out inside. Already uh, finished mud. <laughs> so no I think big, we're just no gonna have to deal. accept that we're gonna get soaking wet. And move the butt. Yeah, righto, mate. We just gotta bleed the air. We've been Dad, changing filters and whatnot. Dad, I want to go upside up. You are? <laughs> oh, you wanna go upside up? I don't know if I can do that. Number five is going to be a new perspective on the world and you really do get a new perspective on the world. As soon as you step foot on a boat, the busy world that you're so used to really does start to fade away. And as you sail away from shore, things that happen on land become so small, just background concerns. The boat is the centre of the world and everything that matters is right there in the boat or immediately around it. And it's not as much about where you're sailing to, but the enjoyment and the challenge of the journey itself. Even on anchor, you're on a sailboat looking back at land you really do see the world from a new perspective. I'll actually never forget the first time I sailed with Riley and we anchored in a Mediterranean harbour. I saw people walking along the beach, the lights of all the houses came on and I really saw humankind in a new way. One where I wasn't really quite a part of it, which 
deepened my understanding of my place in the world. And don't even get us started when you spend weeks sailing across an ocean. It's so random, we're in the middle of the Atlantic. Flowing 30 knots. Absolutely, You're weeks away from land. I would say that Elena and I never really understood just how big the world was until we started sailing across oceans. Oh, it's too big. But then it's weird, <coughs> paradoxical you might say, because it also feels smaller because you, you know how to get across that large expanse of water. But yeah, your understanding of, of the world is deepened for sure. The fact that someday I will die, but having known what our earth looked like and not even having to have left my home to make that happen, that's pretty special. Oh yeah, that's pretty special. <laughs> no, it is special. What's that off? Uh, Riley at the beach. Problem. Our friend Mike is letting us borrow this boat today to go tuna fishing, but we can't find the keys and we don't have any reception to call him. So there's been a slight delay, which is not good because the weather is so good right now. We want to be out there. You gonna go check up at the house? Yeah, you might as well come with me. Okay. That's your other boat, hey? That's your big boat. That's the Albury. Where are the keys to the other one? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got him. Got him, man. All right. Wish us luck. Okay. I just dropped off the dinghy, and now we're going in this boat to the harbour to buy some bait, pick up our friends, and that's it, right? It's a lot of work in getting everything ready for something like tuna fishing. There's floats and lines and. David's like sharpening something, rigging up something as well. Yes. So what are we doing now, Riley? Getting a spot. So who have we got here? I'm Alex. I'm actually making a video about um, why everyone should sell their house and buy a sailboat instead. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'll start by asking you, Alex, uh -huh. what's your favourite thing about boat life? Uh, I would say the freedom, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. not being stuck in one spot. What about you, Ian? I think so far it's been like the sense of accomplishment when you, you know, get to a new area, like navigate new waters and uh, just all the learning and meeting new people out here is pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. No, no. Bonjour. Yeah, nice one. Have any blue water spearfishing experience? Negative. You have some? Yeah. Lots or? Uh, no, medium. So Frank, you've designated one of your fenders. Two, two of my fenders. <laughs> well, we wait to use only one. Usually used to keep uh, Riley from running into my boat today, then we used to <laughs> save some fish. That is true. <laughs> Alright, good luck, David. Thank you. So, Frank and I are in charge of the boat. We just dropped them all off. We're gonna go around the other side and drop some bait in. So it's been what, 
An hour? Uh, yeah, about an hour. The chum isn't working, so we are trying a bell. This is what Ian brought, and he said that Mahi Mahi is super, super interested in it. I don't know about tuna, but at the moment we're willing to try anything because we've come a long way today. We will get our fish today. Nice Ian. So we're we calling it a day everyone. We got a trigger fish. Trigger fish have a sweet flavour, almost similar to crab and groper. A bit of a nightmare to fillet however. This poor little trigger fish had been hanging around for a while and made for an easy target when we decided that the tuna would be a no-show. Triggerfish get their name from the spines on their dorsal fins. The first spine is very strong and when threatened, the triggerfish will flee into a tight crevice, wedging itself tightly into place by erecting and locking the first spine. When danger has passed, the second spine is depressed. It acts as a trigger, unlocking the first spine. How wild is that? So we were just joking. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that meme, but we need to play it again. What, what is no, it? He's the coach of the soccer side. The thing with fishing is. No, well, no yeah, Elaine is saying the thing was the thing was fishing, but he's talking about his own football side, and he goes, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. There are definitely more reasons why you should sell your house and buy a sailboat instead. Um, one of them being age is not a factor. We've met sailors who are young, <laughs> mostly at a sailing school and they haven't like set sail by themselves yet, they're not cruising. Um, but you know, any age from 5 to 70, we see really old people out here. So it is something you can keep doing your whole life and age is not a factor. <laughs> That's it, good job. And obviously, we feel connected to nature. Sailing's pretty close to being clean and green. The huge sense of pride and achievement you get from right, moving right? from one place to the other. And here is love. Like that feeling, I can't explain. I guess it's like riding your bike somewhere maybe, but you just feel like you've really accomplished something. Every place you move, whether it's like a short distance or, or a long one. Socializing. Riley and I socialize more than ever on our sailboat than we do on land. I guess it's because most people out here have the same kind of flexible schedule that we do. They're either picking their own hours when they work, so they have time to meet us for breakfast, lunch or dinner. But yeah, we socialise so much out here on the water. And at the same time though, another point is you really can just sail like to the next anchorage and have it all to yourself and be alone if you want to. Hello. So you can have the best of both worlds. And what's the last one? I'll just let you know the last one. Um, before we get attacked again by Sam's. There's the freedom and adventure. It, it might seem like it goes without say, but I've said it, and so then it went with say. <laughs> our, Australian, our Australian passport is good, Elena was saying before. We feel really lucky with Australian passports. We really can go to most countries without even having to apply for visas. We've left countries and rocked up at the next one without even having researched it. We feel very lucky for that. And yeah, the adventure, you really never know what's around the corner when you're sailing. Where to, Cap? Probably just pop around the corner here for some freedom and adventure. <laughs> So Riley, if, as, if it's not obvious by now, Riley really likes to avoid anything that could be considered cheesy. So he's left all of those up to me, but it's true, so whatever. Well, if you wrap yourself up in an armour of sarcasm and irony, you can uh, avoid saying anything meaningful at all, ever. Yeah, is that what you want? <laughs> but I guess that's why we're a good team. We even each other out.